You know, this 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour DCT may end up being the best motorcycle I've ever owned. You know, Honda really hit it out of the park with this bike. They've done so many things so well that um, when you see things that aren't perfect or aren't just right, you tend to really notice it. And I've identified 10 things that I think Honda really needs to address on this motorcycle so that it will really live up to the potential of what it can be. So I'm going to talk about those 10 things right now on Cruise Man's Garage. You know, there's no doubt that the number one thing that Honda really blew it on on this motorcycle is this GPS. It just simply is not up to the task for a touring motorcycle. You know, if it was on a car and all you want to do is, you know, find the nearest Chinese restaurant and, you know, two miles down the road and have it tell you how to get there, I guess it's okay for that. But a touring bike needs a really robust uh, GPS system and this just simply is not it. Uh, on the previous model Goldwing we had the Garmin system and it was a good system. It had its problems but it was much more capable than this uh, one that I think comes from a company called Harman. Now the first problem is it's limited as to how many waypoints you can have in a route. So if you're using a program like Honda Trip Planner or um, Basecamp and you're laying out your routes ahead of time, you can only have up to eight waypoints on that route. That's simply not enough for a touring motorcycle. Also, it does not recognize those waypoint names. So if you give your waypoint a name, the GPS audio will not play that name for you. There's also no way to invoke an audio command with this GPS. On the previous Goldwing, you had a zoom button on the left-hand control, and if you press that button, it would tell you, you know, like the next turn is in three miles, or your next turn is on five miles. It would give you the next command. This GPS has no way of doing that, so you're pretty much left to what's on the screen. Also, the, the uh, audio navigation has a tendency to just go away, and it doesn't come back, so you have no audio guide. Um, that's a bug that can easily be fixed. But there's other things. You can only have so many routes in the system at any one point, maybe three or four. It's not very many. You know, if you go on a two or three week tour, you're going to need a lot of routes on your GPS. So Honda needs to address the routes, the waypoints, waypoint names, and the POI function is all screwed up. I don't know how that thing's even supposed to work. So it's also not a very intuitive interface in some respects. So Honda needs to pay attention. We have a, a thread on the GL forum that talks about all the problems with the GPS on the 2018 Goldwing. And I hope Honda or somebody from Honda goes there and reads that and sees well, here's what the issues are and here's how they need to be addressed. I think the screen's okay. I think the, uh, you know, even the display of the maps is probably okay. Sometimes it doesn't retain uh, the map display. It loses my heading up feature, 3D heading up, and it goes back to the 2D. And I don't know why it does that, but I've had that happen a couple of times. But um, Honda, if you're listening, GPS needs some work, man. So let's update it. You know, the other nine remaining issues uh, that I'm going to talk about really are in no particular order. They all just need to be addressed. I think the GPS is the number one uh, failing. That's why I mentioned it first. But the rest of these, you know, you can put in any order. There are some issues with the fit and finish on this motorcycle. Uh, in some areas, the fit and finish is immaculate. The paint is really beautiful out in the sunlight. It's probably some of the best paint I've ever seen on a motorcycle. Um, there's still a little orange peel, but the pearl and the metallic is really, really pretty. But there's some areas on the bike, like right here on the trunk, there's this little cowl piece underneath the trunk. And if you run your finger over it, it's, it raised up maybe 1 32nd of an inch, maybe a 16th of an inch above the rest of this trim. It just doesn't look like it fits right. So that's just one example of the fit and finish not being quite right. The same is true of the gas cap lid. Uh, my gas cap lid is stuck up maybe a, a 32nd or a 16th of an inch above the rest of the bodywork. The cubby lid, on the other hand, is perfect. It's perfectly smooth. The shut lines are beautiful. Even the lines around the trunk or the saddlebag are nice. The trunk is nice. 
but there are some areas fit and finish. Probably the worst is that little pocket on the right hand side of the fairing. That thing just doesn't look like it fits right at all. The opening of the door is a little clunky and um, I really think Honda needs to address that. Because this is a beautiful bike and it's really, you know, in many ways very well constructed. But there are some issues with the fit and finish that need to be addressed. Let's talk about this little cubby up front. Um, of course, if you have an airbag model, you don't have this. But on the rest of the bikes, you have this little, this little cubby, which, of course, you have to press down on the right side of the button to even get it to open because of the design of the mechanism, which is pretty poorly designed. And that really should be addressed. But moreover, this is the location where you have a USB cable. And most people are going to put their cell phone in here. So for Honda to not have a locking mechanism on this cubby is a real oversight. Um, you know, what if you get off the bike and you walk away and you forget about your cell phone in there, your $1,000 iPhone X or your Samsung S9, guess what? Anybody can walk up and hit that and they're in the bike. So there needs to be an option for a locking mechanism on this cubby. Another area that I think needs to be addressed by Honda, and I think it's kind of a safety issue, is this horn button on the left hand control. It's pretty much flush with all of the other buttons. Uh, it, from the feel, it feels just like any of the other buttons. So you really, when you're riding, you've got a lot of buttons here. So you can't really tell where the horn button is. A lot of times uh, in traffic, I've tried to honk my horn. I end up either downshifting or I come up here and hit the little, uh, you know, make a call guy. Uh, that's not good. Honda could address this very easily. If they did something to distinguish this button, maybe make it stick out another eighth of an inch, or maybe if the button was longer and extended out over the edge of the control, then with your thumb, even with a glove, you'd be able to distinguish that that is the horn button. Okay, here's a little issue uh, that I found. I'm off the bike, and I'm gonna walk into the house or into a restaurant. Now, I've got my little fob with me, and as I walk away from the bike, it's going to Hopefully, lock the saddlebags, lock the trunk, everything's locked up. The only problem is, I have no way of knowing if that actually worked. Once I get out of range of the bike to where the key fob locks everything, or the system on the bike locks everything, I need some audible beep or something to let me know everything locked up as I walk away from the bike. Seems like a pretty easy thing for Honda to do. And while we're on the subject of the key fob, the system that, that detects the proximity of the key fob and actually turns on these little LED entry lights is inconsistent. Sometimes the light comes on, sometimes it doesn't. So the bike is not consistent when it, you approach the bike. Sometimes it recognizes you. Now, it always seems to recognize you because the trunk and the saddlebags are unlocked. But as far as the LED entry lights, they don't always work right. One of the first things you started to hear people complain about when they got their new Goldwing is these passenger grab rails. Uh, they're basically just too low for a passenger to comfortably grab. There's not really a way to get your hand around it and grip it good. And it, it's not a tie-down point. There's no holes inside the grab rail where you can attach straps or hooks or anything uh, to use it as a tie-down point for the back seat. If you have luggage, if you're a solo rider, and especially since the Goldwing has less luggage capacity, a lot more people are going to want to put a bag on the rear seat, on the pillion, and there's nowhere to tie it down to. So Honda, come up with some other grab rails. I know that the aftermarket is going to address this, but you really shouldn't have to pay a few hundred dollars uh, to get grab rails that work properly. It would be nice if when you put the bike in gear, the parking brake releases itself. Or at the very least, you've got this big, beautiful 7-inch color screen. Put a big flashing uh, parking brake sign flashing to let you know. You've got a little light on the dash, but it's not very prominent and it's very easy to miss. But if you had a big flashing red symbol on that uh, beautiful color screen, it would prevent you from riding off with the parking brake on, which I've done and I suspect a lot of others have done several times. There's another issue with this Sirius XM and the radio where occasionally the XM radio will just jump out and go back to FM with no warning. It just kind of switches off and turns on the FM radio. Uh, I'm sure it's just a bug needs to be fixed, but Honda should address that. 
Uh, it just happens at random points. I haven't been able to reproduce it, but I've had it happen to me two or three times. You know, there are more Android phones in the world than there are iPhones, yet this motorcycle will not let you place a call while you're moving from an Android phone. Now, if you're sitting still, you can do it, but you can't do it while you're in motion, and that's a big oversight. You don't have to have Android Auto uh, to make a phone call while the bike's in motion. My uh, Lexus doesn't have Android Auto, and I can make a phone call uh, from that car from my Android phone. So Honda needs to update the electronics package on this bike. In fact, several of the top 10 that we've mentioned are things that deal with this electronic system. So most of these could be updated uh, in, in product updates. Again, this is a great motorcycle. There are things that need to be addressed. There's things that need to be fixed. There's things that need to be updated. And I hope Honda's paying attention. I'm sure they are. And um, other than that, the bike is amazing. The engine is amazing, the transmission, the DCT transmission is amazing. I'm going to be going over the top 10 things that I love about this bike in the next video. So stay tuned to Cruise Man's Garage. Please subscribe uh, using the subscribe button to our channel and hit that little bell. That little bell will notify you uh, whenever we post new videos. We appreciate your support and also check us out on Facebook at Cruise Man's Garage. Talk to you later.